morning, brethren. All right. Let me pull this thing up. I've silenced it. I've shut it up now. <laughs> it just seems to bring up random stuff sometimes. Um, so when I was younger, I, and still, I always loved Winnie the Pooh, right? And I don't know any kid or anybody who was ever a kid um, who didn't have a favorite character from the Hundred Acre Woods. Now, my favorite was always Eeyore. I see some of you aren't surprised. Um, Eeyore, of course, being the pessimistic, perpetually downcast donkey. He was in contrast to the always excited and bouncy Tigger, the timid but amiable Piglet, the overly cautious, like I said, stuff that happens at random. But uh, Eeyore was the pessimistic donkey who was in contrast to the always excited and bouncy Tigger, the timid but amiable Pooh. I mean, the timid but amiable piglet, the overly cautious and anxiety-prone rabbit, and of course, happy-go-lucky Pooh Bear. So much so was I associated with Eeyore that when I graduated, they presented me with a, ink pen, a really nice ink pen that was done in the style of Eeyore and a pair of Eeyore socks, okay? So they had my number even back then. But here's the thing, brother. Depression is something that many of us have faced and still struggle with sometimes. And I'm not ashamed to say that I have dealt with depression and deal with depression, that I've been diagnosed with clinical depression. And um, despite the fact that depression and anxiety are at record levels, not just in our nation, but worldwide, there's still a stigma attached to depression, isn't there, brethren? Brethren, my goal today is to talk about depression and what the Bible says about it, to maybe offer a different perspective on it, because, brethren, our job in this world is to serve our fellow man the way our Lord and Master Jesus did. And if so, many of our brothers and sisters potential children of God, not just out there, but in here, are suffering or struggling, then this is something that we're going to need to deal with because it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Turn to Psalm 34, starting in verse 18. Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Notice what this verse doesn't say. It doesn't say the brokenhearted should just have more faith. It doesn't say that the brokenhearted should just pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. It doesn't say that the brother, brokenhearted should not take any medicine if, if they're prescribed it. It doesn't say that at all. It says that God draws near to the brokenhearted, brethren, because the brokenhearted are the ones that need compassion and care. They're the ones that need comfort. And many times our first instinct when we know someone is hurting is to kind of shut down, isn't it? And it, it's, it's, it's born out of awkwardness. Let's be real, you know? We know maybe we should say something positive, but we don't know what to say, so we don't say anything. Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 4. It says, Who comforts us in all our affliction... 2 Corinthians 1, starting in 4, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 
For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Brethren, when our brothers and sisters are suffering from depression, we need to remember that compassion, comfort, and unconditional love that we have received time and time again in our lives, we need to be able to carry that and carry it to those who are hurting. We have an obligation to do that. We also need to remember that when we feel that awkwardness, it isn't something that should stop us. You know, it isn't something that should stop us from talking about the gospel. It isn't something that should talk, uh, stop us from talking about, you know, these uncomfortable topics. And sometimes depression can be an uncomfortable topic. You know, Eeyore, in all his gloominess, he wasn't left out of the activities in the Hundred Acre Wood. They brought him along on every, every trip, every, every uh, antic that they got into, that the Hundred Acre Wood crew got into. Eeyore was right there with them. You know, and he wasn't shut out. He wasn't shunned by his friends. You know, he was included. He was always included. So when we feel that awkwardness, we need to push past it. And remember that it's something that we are actually called to do. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 3, says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Sorrow is better than laughter. Does that mean we shouldn't feel glad or feel joy? You know, if it does, Tigger is in some real trouble, all right? No, brethren, what it does mean when we suffer, we allow ourselves to be cared for, don't we? When we're hurting, we are much more likely to submit to God's authority. We allow ourselves to be cared for like little children. We allow him to provide that comfort. We depend on him, which is what he wants from us. Exodus 3, starting in 9, and this is in the NIV. Starting in verse 9, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Isra Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites. And say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Two things I want to take away from this passage, brethren. One, God heard the affliction and suffering of the Israelites and sent Moses. 
Moses, who was awkward. Moses, who had issues, you know, and, and didn't know what to say. You know, and when Moses said, God, I don't know what to say, what did God say? He said, I will go with you. You know, when we carry this comfort, when we don't know what to say, we can take comfort in the fact that God goes with us when we bring that love and compassion to our fellows who are suffering. But the second thing I want to take away from this is that when Moses asked God what his name is, he said this. He said, I am that I am, right? We know a little bit about this, this yad he vav he, right? What we commonly refer to as the tetragrammaton. Now, there are endless debates about how we should say or pronounce this. I'm not getting into that. I'm not. Okay? If we don't try and insert whatever vowels we think should be there, right, what are we left with? Well, we're left with a name that can be derived from a verb that means to be, to exist, to cause, to become, or to come to pass, right? Some scholars actually believe that the sounds of the consonants in the Tetragrammaton actually represent the very breath that God gives us, which gives life. When we are depressed, we need to remember that it is God who gives us life. The very breath in our lungs. He gives us our comfort. And when we sigh in our grief, we are calling out to him, perhaps literally. Romans 8, 26 in the King James Version says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Brethren, um, I debated with myself about whether or not I was going to give this message because it hits so close to the bone for me, because I struggle with depression. And I felt like maybe I was the exact right person to give this message. Brethren, whether it's someone we love who is suffering, or maybe it's us who is struggling with depression, we need to remember that depression isn't a moral failing. Let me say that again. It isn't a moral failing. Depression is not indicative of a lack of faith. Remember what we read in Psalm 34, where it says, the afflictions of the righteous are many. If we see a brother suffering with depression, it doesn't mean that that brother is doing something wrong. It doesn't mean that, that we are in any kind of position to criticize. Instead, what it means is that we should be giving that comfort that we, at times, ourselves need so desperately. While it isn't indicative of a lack of faith, we do have hope in our God even through that depression. And whether we are comforting others who are going with it or we are going through it ourselves, we need to remember this, that God is with us. <laughs>